build apps once. We don't want to click tablet once when we're building the app and then mobile the next time and build the second. That's just like hard to maintain, right? That's extra work. So yeah. why don't we try and build something that just works for everybody? And that's essentially a responsive app, an app that fits inside of a screen container in any size. I like it. <laughs> Which would make me a responsive Power Apps expert by the end of this. Yeah. You'll be, you'll be halfway there. <laughs> Seeing is so, knowing is, yeah. <laughs> so is it pretty much just dropping on those responsive containers? Is that, I'm, I'm sure there's more to it than that, but is that basically what you have to do to get there? Yeah, that's a big part of it. Um, and we'll start to start here, right? But you do have to enable your Power App to be responsive in the first place. Otherwise, it really is just kind of going to fit to Zoom. That means that you build a power app, say your TV screen size, or your screen screen size, 4.3 or 16.9, and then it just kind of maintains the zoom at any level. No, we want to make it responsive. So that's that's really where we start here. I, I would have to say um, every once in a while, I'll get a power apps user or a manager. They're like, can we get rid of these gray bars on the side? Yep. Um, can we accomplish that with responsive design? Gray bars on the side. You mean like gutters on either side? Yeah, so the the power app takes up the full height, right? But there's like just these gray bars on the side because the the app dimensions don't fit the the monitor oh, dimensions. Yeah, we're getting rid of those. Those are a thing that passed. I'm uh, sold. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> You've already got me sold on this. I'm not gonna that, that uh, you know that that feedback again. Yeah. By the way, we got some uh, some lovely folks joining us in the chat today. I just want to give a quick shout out to the the first few people who showed up: Gerald, yeah. Oscar, Jesh. Data is king. No, you're the real king. Uh, Hamza and, and is on there from London. Hello. And uh, I got to figure out how do I how do I chat with these fine folks here now that we're on stream? Am I able to do that? By any chance, do you see the um, there's a pane off to the right, sort of like in Paris, so we have a, a property pane. Um, are you? Oh, just at the bottom. So you you're already seeing them, right? Um, at the very that. bottom, do you see a little thing that you can type and, and hit send? Is that available to you? No, it might be because I'm like a, a guest or something like that, as opposed to host or something. Okay. I can do a private chat with the host and other guests, but uh, maybe what I do mm. is I just kind of shout it out on the side there. Maybe that's what we do on the stream. Yeah, what what I'll do is like I'll just click show as you're going along, and I'll leave it up to you if you want to respond to people or or make the determination if that would be a distraction or a little side shoot. No, that'd be great. I, I want to say. Hi, and kind of interact with people as we're going along, answer questions. That's all about, it's all about, right? Just, just kicking That's right. back and having fun with a few peeps. And getting some coffee ready because it's going to take yeah. some time. Yeah, take your time. Um, hold on one second. I, will, I, I, I might have an emergency here at the house. One second. Okay. Looks like I'll just be here tab dancing for a moment. Speaking of uh, emergencies, I live up here in Canada, in, in Winnipeg, Canada. And uh, as you might have heard, we're having some forest fires there lately. But, you know, not to worry. Uh, things have kind of calmed down here. But uh, anybody living in New York and Philadelphia, I'm just really sorry about what's what's happened there. Just want to say a big sorry from, from Canada. Matt, I want to invite you anytime you want to do a live stream. I think this is the most uh, people I've had on a live stream at once. You are welcome yeah. anytime, sir. Uh <laughs> And by the way, guys, Matt Devaney has his own YouTube. You guys probably already know that. But if you do a search for Matthew Devaney, hopefully what comes up is the interview I did with Matt uh, about a year ago. But I'm yeah. um, hoping that you see his other content. Um, and if you're a part of my Power Apps community, um, I, I believe there's a link in the video description. Go down to the very bottom. The link there is to all of your in embedded YouTube videos in the portion of the community. But that's a free community. Um, I encourage anybody that's publishing any good Power Apps uh, content to make a post in there. Hey, this is my blog. This is my video, whatever. Um, so, um, yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. And uh, you can get at all his links. Uh, there's MatthewDevaney.com in, the in the description below. But yep. if you go into that school community, that very first video, that interview, it says start here, I believe. And it's got all of his uh, links there. And if you're not following him on Twitter, uh, you're you're the favorite account, uh, the most favorite account for me to follow. Uh, there are a few <laughs> others, but you're at the top of the list. Uh, at one point, I created a Power Automate flow to shoot me an email whenever you did anything on Twitter. 
<laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. How very American of you to, to shoot an email. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's some bald eagles in there and some freedom, right? And some, That's right. Yeah. <laughs> just want to uh, give a quick shout out to my my good friend Timothy Shaw, who I saw in the yeah. chat there, right? So uh, just a great friend of mine. Everything I know about UX and UI, I learned from him. So oh, we have him in in the comment section. Yeah. So it's time to slap the desk and and get ready, right? That's yeah. It's time to start. Let's go. Let's go do some. Let's go get some some power ups uh, stirred up here. But before we start, right, we need an idea. We need an idea. We need to know kind of where we're going. And I just kind of threw a few things up on a little like inspiration board, otherwise known as as PowerPoint. And so just just some things I'm looking at that I might want to make today, or just kind of use as a starting point. And then we'll kind of just kind of take it from there and see what happens. Um. So I go like this, right, and I share my screen. And, uh, yes. Okay. That's the third uh, icon at the bottom there. Sounds good. I think I'm going to do... Oh, look, I can share a window. It's just like Teams. Awesome. That's what I know. <laughs> <laughs> do I have to ask the obligatory question? Can everybody see my screen? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there, I got like five different slides here. We're just going to take a quick walk through them. I'm going to tell you what I, what I like about them and what I might find neat to do today. Um, so the first up here is uh, Microsoft Forms, right? We're always building forms inside of Power Apps. I'm kind of stretching this to make it a little bit uh, bigger. Uh, but the thing I like about building this responsively is you we, we're building forms all the time at Power Apps, right? Like that's half of what you do, forms and galleries. I do like having the gutters on the side. I like how it floats over a really cool looking background. The form itself is quite, kind of unassuming, but we can do some things to jazz it up. Um, so that's, that's the kind of first thing that I like looking at there. Uh, recently started up on the buy me a coffee site. What I like about this one is it's got a cool looking header with like a transparent search bar there. Um, just like a really simple gallery design too. So it might be kind of a nice place to start. And again, it kind of scales as you go forward and backward and, and, you know, change the width of the page. Um, got a little, uh, help desk here, which I took from dribble and, oh, let's go to this page right here. Cause you can kind of see both of them. But if you haven't been to Dribble before, Dribble is a place where you can see other people's designs and then kind of use them for, for inspiration. And what I like about this ticketing system is you got like a sidebar, you got a middle, and then you got recent activity. So, you know, if you use Twitter, if you're following uh, one of us on Twitter, you, like you collapse it, like one side of it goes away and then eventually the like the yeah. sidebar scrunches down. So, so that could be something that's potentially neat there uh, too. What else do I got? Oh, yeah, I was looking at the new Power Apps homepage. Like, um, it's it's pretty spiffy, right? It is spiffy. Yeah, I think I'm liking it. Is spiffy still a word that uh, people use? I don't know. It's in my book, but I'm almost fifty years old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no problem, man. I'm like I'm like thirty five, but I'm I've got like gray hair and uh, I look like I've been around forever. So I'm kind of like the Anderson Cooper of power apps. Um, <laughs> Just he's the only guy I know that has just gray hair forever. So I'm going to call myself the Anderson Cooper Power Apps. Um, he's a news guy in the States, I guess. But what I like about this is there's different ways to create an app and your apps. And they're kind of on these nice like hovering um, cards with drop shadows. And there's a really cool drop shadow feature Power Apps just introduced. And then you've got this cool table that's hovering over it too. And as you expand and collapse like this, like the, the formal kind of shift to meet the size of your phone. So just like, like lots of cool stuff going on here. Just my my little brain is just getting inspired by a good many things. Yeah, and then so I think that's that's just some kind of cool ideas to to start. Um, so that's that's where my brain is at. How do I stop sharing here? I think I stopped sharing right, Darren. There we yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. I'm having an issue with my video camera. I've never had this. Uh, this problem on a live stream here, but um, gee whiz, let's see what's going on. That's I think we broke the internet, Matt. <laughs> broke the internet. So we'll kind of tap dance here and uh, yeah. I'll get into open up power apps. But I, I think what I want to do is I want to start with a really simple gallery mm -hmm. um, and, and kind of model it after that, that buy me a coffee site a little bit, but then try sure. to show it and make that floating form. Um, and we always need a theme when we're doing something to make it real. Otherwise, you know, why are we doing things? It's harder to stay interested in the example. So I was thinking, 
uh, why don't we make an app for a busy manager who's always trying to like hire people and needs a place to track all of his job candidates uh, interviews and, and maybe just kind of track the status of where that's at too. So I figure we could start off by draw, like making a really simple gallery to show all of the interviewees that they've recently had. And yeah. then um, from there, just kind of, yeah, take it from there. Do you have a static image right now, by the way? Is that kind of your, uh, you're looking very, there you go. No. There we go. I had you're to use my, and static. my less than camera to, to do this for some reason, but uh, adjust my brightness there. That looks a little better there. No problem. A uh, few more shout outs to you. I see uh, Penn Warner in the chat. Uh, good friends with him for, for a long time. So hello there, Penn. Oscar, known Oscar for a long time. I see Chris Bell for, see more than a few folks I, re I recognize there, whether I've chatted with them or just interacted on Twitter. So yeah, Oscar has been a supporter forever. So yeah. Very cool. Let's get building. <laughs> All right. Very good. So did you want me to drive? Did you want me to do stuff or did you want to do it uh, on your screen? No, I think I'll, uh, I think I'll do it on my screen here and just kind of jump in with questions or kind of be a proxy for the audience. I think that's kind of the best way to, uh, to do this. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking in the comments for ideas. Um, so I think yeah. your ideas are great. I'm not seeing really any ideas in the, the comments here so far. So I say whatever you had in mind would, would be uh, really good. Yeah. Looks good. Looks good. Okay. And so to show that up on the screen again, what we're going to, what we should just kind of start with here is uh, why don't we start with uh, this one here, kind of the, the buy me a coffee style design. But by the way, this is a really simple, like common design pattern in power apps. You always have like a, a gallery and a three screen app, and then you kind of move over to your, your form. Right. So why don't we just kind of see what we can get accomplished uh, during the stream here. Yeah. We'll try and look at, make it look like this is uh, much as much as possible. Right. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, close this here. Let's get booted up in Power Apps. That's our favorite app, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it I surpassed my favorite, which was VB6 for a long time. I always loved it. <laughs> it was the original rapid application development platform. Yeah, which, like, by the way, someone's asking, what's Power Apps really, really great at? Um, the other day, I was thinking, well, it's really, really great at replatforming all those old apps. Yeah, VB6, Access. Yeah, absolutely. I've got, I've got, I've got something to to show everybody, which is in the morning. How would you like to see that? <laughs> is that what you see in the morning, Matt? When you get to get up, <laughs> does that show up on your screen? I'm getting a little bit of feedback on the mic or a little bit of delay through my mic. Is oh, that okay. Yeah. Let me turn that down. Yeah. And, um, it's really weird, Darren, right now I'm getting this thing where like I'm talking, but I can hear myself 10 seconds ago and yourself and hear yourself's coming back. Okay. Let me. Is that better? Nah, it's like. Doing a feedback thing there. Okay, yeah. Um, so something that that might help is if you just um, in the upper left corner there's a less than chevron. If you click on that, of course you'll jump out of the live stream and then just click on the link and you'll come back. And I'm hoping it, things will reset. Um, yeah, this is a rite of passage, by the way. The first time you do any live stream. You're going to yeah. get all kinds of issues and um, I think you're doing great. And uh, yeah, just uh, get out and come back in and, and um, all right, cool. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to look at the, the comments here as well. I'm going to make myself, let's see, a little smaller. Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, you know what I go. did? You know what I did? What's I that? Was I was hovering. I, I have a tab open on the YouTube channel that we were live streaming out of. I so, did that the so first time I did a live stream. I wanted to see how much of a delay there was and everything. And then it was feeding back. Hilarious. And for the first 15, you can go to my live stream, go to the very first one. Yeah. It's actually one of my most popular videos. I go over the service desk application for the first 15 minutes was nothing but echo for people. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, 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 it's a hit with the cat again. What were you, were you showing up on the screen there? Oh yeah. So um, 
is this what you wake up? Uh, the, the left <laughs> side of this is what, this is what you wake up to the morning before you have your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> my, my cat had such big eyes last night. This is Tiggy, Tiggy Tiggerson. He's my tabby cat. And uh, I just thought I'd kind of, uh, you know how they say uh, owners kind of look like their pets or pets kind of look like their owners, that type of thing. So I tried to take a picture where I looked as much like him as I could. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's uh, Tiggy Tiggerson. <laughs> have you ever have you ever been told that you look like Doctor Strange? No, like uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah, but <laughs> but with all the I don't know. I, I, I was just thinking of um, Matthew's alter personality, Doctor Strange. You know, I'll with, take that. I'll take or, that. Or maybe the Power Apps Sorcerer Supreme. I'd have to grow a goatee. Just throwing that out, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like how organized you are. I remember that you told me, I'm like, Hey, how do you come up with your content ideas? Well, you, you've got a, like a, a list or, or a, a notebook always there. And you're always writing stuff down, like what you're dealing with in the week. And oh, it yeah. gives you great content ideas for when you hit what the weekend, when you start working on your, your blog posts. Got it right in front of me right there. Yeah. I just kind of keep that. Oh. Keep that in my backpack. And that's like my, my backlog of blog ideas or just content ideas or whatever I want to make. And, and do you uh, carry that with you everywhere? Or is it just always on your desk? Uh, it's uh, it's always on my desk. If I go um, like on a on a drive somewhere out of the city, like I'll take it with me because I want to make sure I capture it somehow. The best uh, ideas always come on four hour drives out to uh, you know the country, going camp and go to my wife's parents. So yeah, don't want to lose them. That's the thing. Like you you think of these things, you just want to make sure you have a place where you capture them and don't lose it. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Let's, uh, let's boot up this Power Apps. Uh, I think we're about 20 minutes in here. It's time. It's time. <laughs> um, let's go to a different Chrome tab, though, or else we're going to have uh, Power Apps Inception, just like it did the last time there. <laughs> Whoa, that's a wide screen. Yeah, yeah. We're going to we're gonna scrunch that down a little bit. Is that a little bit more easy yeah. to see? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This, this, this uh, what do you call it, uh, stream is for the ultra wide. Talk about here. responsive. Let's get responsive. Yeah. Restream needs to be responsive. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to toggle off, try the new power apps. Cause I'm going to be honest. I don't know what I'm doing yet with that. <laughs> yeah. Or wait, yeah, they start... just put that in like a, like oh, a week or two go. ago. Right. Yeah. Oh, look, blank canvas. That's what I want. I just want something that says start from a blank canvas on the home screen. I don't really want to start from what they're, what they're doing. Um, oh, look, you can even pick tablet or phone in a little chip style menu. That's nice. I like that. Oh wow! I both okay. I both love and hate the fact that they're always tweaking and adding things to. <laughs> I I saw that uh, a, a video recently by Shane Young. He mentioned how they they changed how the gallery works, um, and I was like, oh man. <laughs> yeah, that's what they that's what we love about like working with a live service, right? It's just always changing and never stopping, and. Uh... <laughs> You just got to keep up with it because there's no choice. Yeah. I mean, you could have switched to VB7 at any time, right? But you stuck with VB6. I'm just kidding. It's probably only VB6. <laughs> I well, know. I did pick up uh, .NET, but I always yeah. reminisce and get some feelings of nostalgia whenever I see <laughs> VB6 stuff, you know. So first things first here, um, always save your power app when you, when you start working. Um, because then auto save gets enabled and if something bad happens, maybe we lose power or maybe the internet goes out, I'll still have something to come back to. Absolutely. So call this, uh, Darren's, Darren's live stream. As it is your live stream. There you go. And by the way, at the end of this session, if you wouldn't mind hitting F12 to send me that MSF file, I'll make that uh, file available into the, the community. Oh, sure. Yeah, I mean, they can Everybody totally can take a little drawing that I made and hang it up on their fridge, right? It's going to be just like a kid who <laughs> drew something and got proud of it and put it on their fridge, for sure. I'm just <laughs> making fun of myself here. Okay, so when you're building a, a power app that's responsive, um, you hit the play button here. The first thing you're going to notice is, ah, it's not really you know, too responsive there. Unless you go to your settings and you go to the display settings, and here you can see that we have tablet style orientation, 16.9, that's like widescreen. And that makes sense because that's what we picked. And we're set up to scale to fit. And Darren, like you said, 
you're always going to have those little gray borders on the side of your power apps, the top, the bottom, if you pick scale to fit here, it's not going to be responsive. It's always just going to stay at the width, the kind of whatever it is. So yeah. to make your app responsive, just one little click. There you go. Boom, done. Scale to fit. Now the app is always going to stretch to uh, whatever size of the screen that we have. And it's going to stay the same when we're editing it because that would just be impossible to edit. But when we hit that little play button, it's going to, going to stretch to fit the the size of the screen. So why don't we start off with like a really basic responsive uh, technique here. Uh, we'll start off by just building a quick gallery, put some cards in it, and then make them stretch to fill the screen because that's just a great place to start. I'm going to call this uh, right. list screen because we're going to make a list of job interviews. Again, the example we're going to make is uh, I'm a busy manager who's interviewing lots of people and I just want a place where I can record my interviews so that I can go and hire people from that list later. We'll call this a uh, list screen. Okay. Uh, we're, we have a gallery that we want to place on this screen. We have a header that we want to place on this screen, but let's not even start with containers here. Let's just start with building a basic gallery that's going to be responsive. So we'll drop a vertical gallery on the screen. I like blank vertical galleries. Why? Because I just want to have full control and do things for myself. <laughs> I agree hundred percent. Yeah. That, that's all mostly I use unless I'm doing tabs or something. Yeah. You don't ever start from like vertical gallery and pick title, subtitle, body, right? Yeah. yeah. And then you start taking some of those controls out. Then you got airs to deal with. It's like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> So notice what I'm it. doing here is I'm kind of orienting the gallery to the top left-hand corner of the screen. Mm -hmm. Now I could go ahead and stretch it to fill the screen, but there's, there's a problem with that. And I'm going to illustrate it. I'm going to hit this fill button here and just give it a temporary color. Uh, what's your favorite color, Darren? Uh, blue. Blue. Okay. There's so many blues. Cornflower blue, yeah. cadet blue, dark blue. What do you like? Uh, like a blue that's uh, that's behind me or or power automate blue. I like power, that. I, power automate blue is not a color here. So, uh, so um, we'll go with cornflower because uh, okay. we're kind of corny on this power apps uh, stream yeah, today, right? right? So, <laughs> so if you hit this uh, play button, what you're going to notice is, oh, hey, look, the gray borders are gone on the side of this app. And by the way, the top one would be two if we weren't in editor mode. But yeah. because I used a fixed width, it's just going to be like, oh, it's blue now, but it doesn't exactly stretch to fill the screen. And that's not cool. That's not what we want. If we actually want an item to stretch and fill the screen when we're in this responsive mode, we've got to use our use our width property here. And we can type something like app.width. There's a special app object. Ooh, that's that's neat. And now if I press the play button, it's always going to stretch to fill the screen no matter what size it's at. I like it. Because what's going on underneath here is if I throw a label in here, if I actually show you what's going on, I type in app dot width like this, mm -hmm. you can see it's constantly recalculating the size of the screen. Very nice. So yeah. I like this. App dot width. So we might as well do that for our height too. Make sure our gallery is always going to fit here. And we'll do app dot height. You could also do parent dot height. That, that works as well. Parent just gets the next control up in the tree. But we're just keeping it simple uh, for now. Okay. So now we know it's always going to fit no matter what screen size we have it in. And then by the way, we've got these awesome responsive selectors. Did you see these, Darren, like recently? I did. I, and I'm just like so overwhelmed with, with yeah. uh, the new changes they've released. I, I was like, wow, this is really cool. I love so, so this is this video came at a really good moment, you know, because this helps you with your responsive uh, yeah. design, right? For the folks in the chat there, I, I want you to tell me like what, what type of uh, devices are you designing for uh, these days, right? What type of devices do you have and what type of devices are you designing for at your, at your companies? Just love to hear it. Maybe Darren could, could shout them out. Absolutely. The last, the last comment was uh, beautiful. Um, beautiful. And then Victor said, very good day. And data is King said, uh, I think skill to fit should be turned off by default. 
I think so too. But on the other hand, sometimes we think like pro developers when the folks who are using this, right, aren't always all at the same level that we are. Like for the folks starting out, responsive is a very difficult concept. And so Power Apps it kind of has to straddle that line between um, is this built for pro devs? Is this built for citizen devs somewhere in between? And like, sh should we be trying to help people out like more in the in the first steps of the journey as opposed to the the next steps, like the people who can kind of figure out how to do that? But maybe where we should draw the line is maybe we should get to set defaults for ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's let's make something nifty. Let's let's keep her going here. So I want to uh, first of all just see what the little cards in my gallery are going to look like. So let's give this a nice little uh, fill. Maybe we'll start with uh, this level of gray and just kind of see where we get to. RBGA is not a supported function. Of course it's not because we like to use gray. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <that's>, yeah. <laughs> Always you know, what that. threw me for a loop with all these recent changes is I was going in there, I'm, I'm used to just typing the word white. Yep. And after a while, you wouldn't allow you to do uh, things like that. It wanted the, uh, what do you call their enumerated value? That's what they were called back in mm -hmm. uh, VB6 or .NET. Um, I don't know what you call that in uh, Power Apps. But um, here's the question. What for already built app, can we change it to responsive? You can, but you're going to have to recode it. It's not going to mess with the app in the way that changing the default dimensions do, you know, if you like change from tablet to like widescreen to like four or three or something like that, it resizes all your controls. It's not going to do that, but you do have to go back and add the responsive properties. It is not just out of the box going to be great. <laughs> yeah. Here what I'm doing is I'm just adding a little bit of a template size and a, and a fill. Just going to use the default uh, information in the gallery here. And you saw I added some padding to the sides there. So very important to have some nice little gutters on the side of your work and separation between these boxes or cards. And we're going to make them like look like fancy cards. But here, yeah. I just want to show once again, are we on tablet? So let's go back to uh, window size. So here, once again, it's resizing to, to kind of fill my screen. And you can see the, the start of some cards that we might have, right? Right. For now, the now. padding of the like that, yeah. property name for that. Um, let me make sure everybody got that um, at the top of my head. I don't on the property pane, uh, I like template padding, something like that. Yeah, yeah. That is just a uh, good old fashioned template padding property. That's right. That's right. And now we want to do something a little bit cooler than these uh, just white boxes here. Let's take advantage of those new drop shadow containers I was talking about that are that are pretty nifty. So we're gonna throw a color dot uh, transparent in there. Let's put in a vertical container. Who wants to learn about vertical containers? <laughs> These are the great best. To me. Now that was actually a recent blog post that you had, right? To add those uh, drop shadows. Yeah, make a ridiculously simple drop shadow. <laughs> So have a good friend uh, named Gita, and you might have seen her at, at conferences. Uh, she's pretty awesome. And she had this post where it, it tells you how to make a drop shadow on Power Apps, but you got to use HTML. And that's how we did it for like the last five or six years. Yeah. But now they've just baked them into containers and we don't, we don't need to do that anymore. We don't need to do anything like super fancy. Yeah, we can just change. set it as a property. Yeah, yeah. So... I will just, uh, yeah, let's, let's set that up while I'm doing this. We'll make this card responsive in a minute. So here you can kind of see, oh, look, it actually came in with that already. That's neat. Kind of came in with that, that nice looking drop shadow. So if you scroll down here and I'm selected on my container, uh, you can see it applied a drop shadow of light. So here's what it looked like with none. This is what we're used to. But you can change the property to have a drop shadow now. And look at that. Now these cards just like really pop out. This is looking like a really nice and professional design. That's great. And it came in by default. That's kind of neat. Now I guess they're pushing people into rounded container cards. <laughs> um, you can change the border radius. Like if you want a square, if you want square cards, just set it to zero. Mm -hmm. You can do that too. But let's have some fun. Let's let's make these these nice and round. 
Do you know why you might want rounded edges on your cards instead of uh, square edges, Darren? My immediate answer would be uh, it looks a lot nicer, but I'm sure there's a better answer. Yeah, and and like the the rounded corners look like less sharp and and non-threatening, right? They're more pleasing to the eye in that way. At least that's the yeah. UX principle I'm aware of. That's a good I always point. got kind of scared looking at those sharp corner containers like they're going to cut me or something. Just <laughs> I wish I could, you know, the text boxes by default have rounded corners. Of course, you can modify <laughs> them, but um, why not the drop downs? Why not the combo why boxes not? and the yeah. other controls, you know? Now, this one here is uh, important. So we're going to make these cards fit to the gallery that we've just placed in here. And the formula I'm writing is parent dot height. So this container sits inside the gallery. And by the way, mm. you might be tempted to do parent dot height. You just want the height of the thing. But mm -hmm. this gallery is the size of the screen. What we actually want is the parent template height or just the height of an individual row inside this gallery. So a little bit of a switch up there. Likewise, we're going to hit visible, sorry, width dot uh, template width like that. And now if I press the play button, let's go back to, so I'll make it narrow, make it big. And look, now these cards are always stretching to fill like the, the size of the screen, which is really neat. Very nice. Very nice. Yep. So now we have to populate these cards with some, some data. So I'll scroll out here. This is a vertical container. And if I type the word container here in my add buttons, there's three types of containers that we can work with. There's vertical, horizontal, and just container. And what this vertical container does is any object that you stack inside of it, it's gonna appear from top uh, to bottom there it's going to just the first one's going to go at the top second one's at the bottom the third is it's going to go yeah below that if you have a horizontal it's going to make things go left to right but say if you have a horizontal container and that rightmost object doesn't fit in the screen anymore the nice thing about it is it can kind of ship that ob object down below it as the screen size gets smaller and resize your cards for you so you don't have to do any fancy math or anything like that and once you start to use these containers, like you'll use them all the time. It's a struggle at the start, but if you force yourself to actually use them, I just, I can't live without them. I build everything in containers and it's, it's just how I live now. <laughs> I like them a lot better than groups. I can tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're building an app to do with job interviews here. And what are some things you might want to know about interviewees and see on a card? Um, I, I would assume if like if if you're hire, hiring students right out of college, you might want to know their GPA. Um, you might want to know their skills. Um, maybe their uh, skill levels. Like if, so, if it's a Power Apps job, I want to yeah. know what their skill level is in Power Apps, what it is in Power Automate, Power BI, all that type of stuff. So I'm looking in the comments here. Annabelle says name. There you go. That's need a name. <laughs> That's what you're looking for. Okay. Name, yeah. <laughs> Experience, Experience uh, education. Yeah. And keep in mind on these cards here, this is like the top level of view, right? This is just before we get into the form. These are the really fine bits. Let's let's keep track of some of these things because we actually want to put them on our form in a bit. So we heard education, right? We heard yeah. skills, we heard GPA, uh, we heard experience, right? Uh, what were some other ideas there? Uh, we need to have a rating. We need to have a, how many stars is this person? Um, yeah. You might want to put like where they're from, right? Um, yeah. Okay. So I made some notes, some crib notes on the side here. So those are great ideas. I'm going to incorporate some of them into the, into the form that we build in just uh, like a little bit. One okay. question we have from John or what are the pros of always using containers? What are, what are the pros of you always using containers? Well, you never have to, right? I'll show you right now, okay? So right now I'm using a container to make this name field on my card and that's just, uh, let's make this name Matthew Devaney, right? That's, why not? Now, 
if I wasn't using a container, I'd always have to constantly like drag things across the screen or really just think about how much do I want this? Do I want this to be 350 pixels wide or 353 pixels wide? Just all this overhead that I don't want to think about while I'm building a power app. But watch this, um, Matthew Devaney, I wanted to expand to the size of the card. How should I do that? Boom, I'll just hit this button right here that says stretch. And now it's uh, now it's stretched across the screen, right? So it's all these like really tiny decisions that you're making add up and they, they kind of cause this mental strain. And I find that if I'm doing drag and drop, I just, I kind of burn out easier making power apps. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Can do for longer. <laughs> right. So yeah, the first is just decision making. And then second, you, you never have to think about the positioning of things. You just tell it like you want left, right, or center. Do you want any pad padding on that? And then it just appears where it needs to be. Um, let's make this bold because or some semi-bold. What's your favorite font? I like Sego UI. I like bangers. I don't know. I don't know that that's available. And uh I like that for my thumbnails. <laughs> Probably not in an app, though. <laughs> no, you don't want to go web dings. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that would be cryptic, right? <laughs> yeah, make this uh, make this a little bit bigger. Okie dokie. Uh, all these things are coming way too close to the edge of the card here, so I can just put a padding on on that entire container. And the, by by the way, everything just pops out from the side. Um. Maybe these should be set down to, to zero because I just want to control it solely based on the container. So look at that, right? I've very easily just moved everything out from the side. Uh, I think we need a we need a rating here of how many uh, stars is this person going to be? So why don't we use that rating control that like we never ever use? That seems yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah, the stars. Yeah. Yeah, good old stars. I always have good intentions to use these stars, but I never like get to use them. And so you saw me click the little button to reorder and move it up here. Yeah. But another thing that you can you can do is you can hit your control button and your square brackets and kind of move them up and down using your toggle keys and yeah. just as just as well. That's my favorite power up shortcut, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do you change the size of these icons here? Does it just kind of change based on the on the width or what? I think so. Well, that's nice. Although I probably only use the the rating control. Yeah, there you go. The width. A handful of times, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's uh that's looking okay. Um, and maybe we wanna have the date that we that we've interviewed them. Um so, and you'll notice like I'm not using any actual data yet. I'm just really mocking this thing. Yeah. Uh, that's important when you're designing. You never want to go to the end right away. You just want to do the, do the design first. So I think what I might like with this card is to have the, have the date over far on the right hand side, kind of when you're like, when you're reading your emails. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so let's just do this first. Let's let's roll this without the date, and I'll come back and, and show you more container stuff in a minute. Sure. So this isn't really sitting in the middle of the card vertically. So we'll just uh, hit our container here again. And then, by the way, now it's nice and vertically oriented. Now this card looks a little bit uh, too big. So we are going to change the template size once again to 100. There we go. That's looking a little bit better. Absolutely. I like I it. Think, I think now we just need um, a better color here. So let's do goldenrod. So oh, Minty has a question. Do containers impact app performance? They they do um, because they are constantly uh, resizing mm. um, when, when you are making the app. And so I think that it's something that Power Apps is getting better at, and there's some techniques that you can use to cut down on how, like, how janky is the resize going to be, like how smooth is that going to be versus versus not. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it does seem to take up some overhead right now, and I and I do hope that the Power Apps team continues to work on it because uh, this is important, right? It's one of the more important features. Yeah, but is it going to be the difference between your app like? 
crashing and and running no like not that you just might see some some fun stuff on the on the resize and then chris had a question where is the button that made the text control stretch is there a setting that makes your mouse clicks highlighted yeah. Oh, is there a setting that makes my mouse clicks highlighted in the stream? Mouse clicks highlighted. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing that. Um, like on your screen as as you're presenting, I'm not seeing any highlights. Chris, is that is that what you're talking about? Or are you made the text con control stretch? Is there a button that made the text control stretch? So yeah, give us a little bit more clarification on that. I'm I'm just keeping sure. an eye on the other questions as well sure. while you clarify. Yeah, so we started out uh, like this. Matthew Devaney is all scrunched into this little tiny box right here. And we've placed this label inside a container. Now, when you place this label inside a container, it gives it a few extra properties. Uh, over here, we have this align and container property. Mm -hmm. And it's asking, how do we want to make this responsive inside the container? So, I could, so what I did is I hit the stretch button over here. And now the text bar is filled to stretch that entire, the width of the entire container that we've we put it in. Very cool. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Okay, I think this is a really good question. So a question that um, I might be thinking about if, if mm -hmm. I don't know nothing about this. I, uh, what if I don't want the label to stretch all the way across because I want another control next to it with some spaces between? Yeah, why don't we uh, use that date example? Um, and what I mean here is I'm, I have Matthew Devaney with some stars, but when you, I want to also place the date of the interview that happened and it doesn't really look great putting it below. I want to put it on the top right hand corner, just like you'd see an email or your Twitter or your chats and stuff like that. Yeah. So why don't we, why don't we use that example? So we will have to get going with our containers, uh, once again here in order to do that. So now I'm going to need to add a horizontal container into the mix. Horizontal. And the horizontal container is going to allow us to place things across the screen, left to right. Reorder up. And this thing is a little bit too big right now. Um, the size of this text box is only 40. So we're going to change the height of this horizontal container to, to 40. And, oh, this is something that happens from time to time. When you paste a new container in, mm -hmm. it tries to make height flexible. So we want okay. to the height to off. Yeah, we want to we want to set that off. Now I can take my label and move it inside of this uh, horizontal container here. And Matthew Devaney is kind of scrunched up at the moment. We will we will make this uh, stretch by putting the flexible width toggle on. Okay, now we're back. So so now we're kind of at the start of where we need to get to to answer your question. So I've put this horizontal container in. So now I can place controls beside each other and maybe even like leave a gap in the middle. Yeah. So any control I place in here is is left to right, and the way I've set it up is that. The first control goes at the start, and then the next one goes to the right, to the right, to the right. But what if we want to place something else in here? And what if we want to like leave a gap? So I will place my, do I still have that date in there? No, I don't have my date in there. So this control is just kind of going all the way to the end at the moment. But I want to make this a date, let's just call it uh, today. I don't really like the bold in here. I'm going to tone it down a bit. I'm going to go like that. Now we have a nice looking uh, date on the far right hand corner here. You'll also notice that this container's drop shadow is set to on and we don't want that. We just want this to be a transparent uh, container that doesn't actually, that doesn't actually look like it's stacked inside there. Yeah. So here we have a date on the far right hand side. I might also want to take that label and align the text of it so that it's on the so it's on the right. 
So how are these things working and getting positioned inside the container? Let's make the backgrounds very obvious so we can see what that looks like. Let's do a light pink and let's do a, a light blue. Those are very like boy, boy girl, baby colors, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think the pink is from your website, right? It must be, right? Yeah. <laughs> pink is pink is kind of my jam. So <laughs> that's that's awesome. So now, like as we're stretching the container, you can see that the pink bar is getting uh, shorter and longer, whereas the blue is is kind of staying the same. We know that that date is always going to be relatively the same uh, size. And how we control that is, is if I'm clicked on this pink bar right here, you can see that I have a flexible width turned on. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I click on the other label, you can see that the flexible width is is turned off. And so it's actually just a static, uh, static value of, of 150. We could probably tighten that up a little bit too to, to make it a little bit smaller. So from the right a little bit. There you go. So not sure if that, that answered the question, but that's that's how we make the card. If I didn't have this set to flexible width, what would happen is I'd have these two things jammed up right beside one another. Right? And so they're all just, they're just both the same width at the moment. And if I want to put a gap between them, I can change this gap property of the horizontal container. And by mm -hmm. the way, now I can put a gap of 20, put, put some daylight, put some space between them, like a gap of 40, even bigger, right? But this is great case, stuff, man. That's great. Right. Yeah. So appreciating. Yeah. Uh, it's you schooling us on this. This is. Like why aren't why haven't we been doing this from the, the get go? Is is probably the the question in my mind and everybody watching this video, you know. And uh, so I do have a quick ask of everyone that's viewing this live or or even um, you know a, as like on demand afterwards. Okay, I'm going to put Matthew Devaney's website. What I would like to ask you guys to do is go click on this MatthewDevaney.com and sign up for his his newsletter. Um, because he's got oh, cool. great articles yeah. out there and uh he does have a youtube channel um what is the handle of your youtube channel is it at matt devaney yeah i i don't really know what that is yeah, um get i haven't been too active on that but if you go to matthewdevaney.com slash subscribe there's a nice little um subscribe page where you can just sign up from a newsletter i'm putting out a new power ups article uh each and every week and I hope to have one out in responsive design soon. Um, Very cool. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, I'll stuff. find I'll find your YouTube link and I'll paste it in the the comments that are going by the live comments. I have uh, one more ask, which is: if you're getting anything helpful out of this, a comment or even a like really helps the channel, and that's people like you know this is good content. Much appreciated. And we're back. Do it. Do it. And you can still hear me there, Darren, right? Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, definitely go sign up for, for Darren's YouTube. Uh, Darren's like prolific uh, in the realm of YouTube, just like I'm prolific in blogging. Like he's doing stuff pretty much every week. And there's just so much you can learn by watching his channel. So please like go ahead and, and subscribe. Like yeah, I'm a big fan of what he does. It really but inspired what I like me, about Matt, it. because I, yeah. I really admire you for, for how organized and thoughtful you are when you create. Because you're every blog, blog entry has got, got uh, it's got a good consistent structure all, all the way throughout you yeah know, got the topics at the top so people can find out what they're going to learn they can click on it and go right down to the part they're looking for uh, um so i really admire how, how organized you are with everything that you do i thank you um the philosophy behind that is i want to show people where we're going and get them to really understand as soon as possible when they click on a link to go to my blog what they're going to get out of it and so that's why we always start off with a little table of contents so you can scan with your eyes and kind of read, oh, this is what we're going to do in this tutorial. And why you see a picture right, of the finished product is the first thing we're going to do. Uh, it's so hard to go on a journey of learning uh, if you don't know where you're going uh, to, right? You don't know where, what the destination is. And so I think I just like to put that in front of people uh, first thing. 
So here we go. Uh, we continue to, to work on our gallery. And now you can see, because of how we set up that date, you see how it's always kind of sliding to, to be closer and further now? Isn't that nice? It is Looking nice. Good, eh? Looking good. I do think that the gallery is just a little bit out of um, alignment here. Is it? If you look at this, Darren, like really closely, it looks like there's more white space at the top of this than there is the bottom. Yeah. So that might does. be something to do with the, the padding. So for the, uh, are, is there any padding on this? No, there's padding on the gallery. So if we go to our height here, we probably just want to do parent dot but let's see if this works parent dot template padding divided by two no oh. what we'll do is we will just bump up the the bottom padding on this container here maybe we'll bump it up by by 10 to get it more centered like that okay that's looking kind of nifty that's looking nice and centered there yeah do you have so any tips on how to make this text good. size responsive Yeah, I do. I do. I do. I do. So, and that, is that a listener question? Yeah. Yeah. By Minty. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So right now we're looking at this on a computer screen, very big, very wide, um, kind of, but also much lower density in terms of pixels than phones, like the little screen size inside your inside your phone like has way more pixels on it probably than your computer i might be just talking out my butt here but uh <laughs> i went behind <laughs> but, uh, i think that's i think that's why that happens and so how do we change the and so what happens is if we create it really really to a nice size here it might also like look too big on the phone so how do we how do we change the text size as, as we kind of go along how do we change the size of anything so let's just pop a label on the screen first because I need to show you how do you detect what is your screen size. Yeah. Um, we'll put a nice fill on this, like another color dot light blue. And we'll align it to the center. And here we'll put something about the, the screen size. Okay, so how do you detect your screen size? You can detect your screen size by using this formula, app.activescreen dot screen, or just dot size. And right now you can see that I have a size of four. What the heck does four mean? <laughs> do you think maybe it's like the secret of the universe or whatever, the meaning of life? Maybe it's 42, like Hitchhiker's Guide, right? <laughs> But first thing I want you to see is just don't even worry about what this number means, but just watch as I kind of change the screen size, right? Three, two, one. Smallest is one, next is two, next is three, next is next is four. And so when your screen size is showing as one, that means that you have the smallest screen size. It's like a phone. It's like your vertical phone just kind of standing up like this, right? When you get to screen yeah. size number two, I want you to think of that like it's your tablet standing up vertically. Ah. Same orientation, but kind of that width. Yeah. Number three, whoops, I skipped over one. That's like your tablet going lengthwise or on a laptop screen. And number four, that's like an ultra wide monitor, just something really, really big. But how is Power Apps actually going ahead and, and detecting all of this? That's the next question. So here's here's something fun. Oops. Oopsie, oopsie. Boom, boom. Just like that. We're also going to do the app.width. So it's always based off the like the width of your the width of your device. And I put some fun brackets on there that I shouldn't have. I go like this, right? Just want to do that many pixels. So here you can see the screen size. Oh, 
number four screen size, and that means that's that many pixels, right? So it's all driven off the width of the pixels on your screen like that. But how is that set? How do you know when something is a one or a two and a three and a four? Well, you go to your app settings here and they have these things called size breakpoints. And the breakpoints are what defines what's a small screen, what's a medium, what's a large and an, and an extra large. So anything under 600, that's your size one, that's your small. Anything 600 to nine, that's size two, that's your medium. Anything 900 to 12, that's your three. Anything 1200 above, that's your four. So if you remember those numbers, six, anything under 600 is small, mm -hmm. right? Now we're two, now we're three, <laughs> now we're four, okay? Now all this is like leading, now all of this is leading up to our friend's question in chat there. How, how do we change the size of text based on, on the screen size? Yeah. How do we do it? <laughs> <laughs> and so one way that we can do it is we go to our size property here and we write a fun little if statement and I'll try and zoom in on the screen so you can you can see it. So you can say something like if the app dot active screen dot size equals screen size dot small or if you knew about that one, Right? If the screen size is small, maybe we want our text size to be small. Maybe we want it to be 13. But if the <coughs> app, actually we want it to be, uh, yeah, let's just leave it like that. Act is going to small. But otherwise, if it's anything else, make it, uh, make it 16, I guess. Now, as I'm dragging it across the screen, you can see it gets smaller. I wasn't enough of a difference. I need to make this more drastic, Darren. Let's make it like 10 versus uh, 32. Okay. Okay. This could be more drastic than you actually do in real life, but it's really big here, but we're on a smaller screen, so now it gets smaller. Bigger, smaller. Bigger, smaller. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. You're probably thinking to yourself, do I have to actually go and write that inside of every like darned variable on the screen? <laughs> and like maybe that's a, or every darn control on the screen, that seems like a pain. There's two ways that you can accomplish this, like in the real world, so it only calculates once. And my, my good friend Shane Young there um, taught me one of them. So you can you can calculate this, the size of text in, in one, control like a header or something like that, like your title bar, and then just kind of reference it throughout your screen. Or you can store this inside of a variable and just have it update when, have that variable update when the screen size updates. So you don't have to have crazy logic in all your, all your apps, sorry, all of your values there. But uh, yeah, it's just a, that's just a, a start there. Okay, so we've that got great stuff. a nicer, nicer looking uh, set of, uh, what do you call it, uh, cards here. So I think now we probably need an app header, right? And yeah. we probably okay. want a niftier background than the color gray. And uh, you tell me if my friend Tim is still on the chat there, because if Tim Shaw is still on the, on the live stream, you can use one of his tricks and give him a shout out. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Now, Darren, when we're building this app here, do you think we should have a title bar at the top that's kind of fixed, or do you think that it should scroll away if we're going up and down this uh, form here? It should probably be fixed, right? Yeah. It's in the top spot? Okay. So we built this lovely gallery, and now we need to put it inside another... We need to actually put this inside of um, a container. I'm going to call this list screen um, one because we're, we're going to start start kind of fresh here and paste our container inside of it because I want you and to Tim Shaw is still on, by the way. Tim Shaw is still just... on. Tim <laughs> Shaw. Shout out to Tim Shaw. I have to say Tim's name a couple more times during this chat. He's, he's kind of like Biggie Smalls. <laughs> you say his name three times and he appears. Um, <laughs> is it Biggie Smalls or is there something else? I think it's a South Park thing. So does, does he have a blog or a YouTube channel? Uh, what does he do? 
Yeah, Tim mm. has a Twitter uh, at short for Tim, right? As in, kind of like short for time, but at short for Tim. Uh, okay. Tim's from Wyoming. He's he's a good buddy of mine, and he's he's made some awesome stuff like uh, a new morphic uh, um, styling uh, generator for power apps, which is which is really cool. Um, he also made this really cool fly out uh, animated button where you like if you want to press something on the thumb button on your phone, like the little icons pop up animated around the screen and stuff like that. Right. They kind of slide out and slide in. Okay. If, Tim, uh, puts, if Tim puts a link to that in the chat, uh, we'll be sure to link to them. Um, yeah. I just want to show his fine work. Go find that. Maybe. Yeah. OK, so we're going to start from scratch here and we're going to add the, the, the gallery in there in a minute. So we want a title bar and we want a space for the gallery. We're going to build this using containers. So this is, this is your first indoctrination and in how do you start fresh from containers, Darren? Mm -hmm. So we're doing a blank screen. We're starting the vertical container. Okay. And like I was talking about before, we always want this to fit the entire size of the screen. So we do app dot height on that container. Mm -hmm. And then we do a app dot uh, width. And so now this container is filling the whole thing. Let's name this thing a list screen again. Okay, good. But now we want to we want a title bar at the top, and we want a space mm -hmm. for the gallery. So if we want a title bar at the top, we're going to need another container, right? Because we have a probably a label. Maybe we have some some menu buttons on that. Do you think we should use a vertical or a horizontal container for that? Uh, for things so like that are there. going down, you have the app header and then everything below. Is that what you're asking for, for that scenario? So for the title bar at the top of the app, do you think we should do a horizontal or a vertical container? Uh, I'd say horizontal because if we okay. want many things right. uh, to go horizontally. You're right. Yeah. And this is the thought process, folks, right? You're always thinking about what direction do you want to lay things out in that container? We're so used to dragging and dropping things places, but really the decision we're making in our mind is we're going like left to right or up to down. And this is just simplifying things. So when I drop the container in there, first of all, I'm going to call this this um, big container uh, list main. And I'm going to call the title bar one uh, title bar. Title bar. Now this thing has taken up the whole screen right uh, at this point. We don't want that to happen. It just kind of inherits the properties the container you placed in. So we only want this thing to be so uncheck flexible height. We probably only, only want it to be about a hundred, and we only want it to and we want it to be the width of the screen here. So we hit this stretch button on the on the title bar container now it's stretching across the entire screen and you can see once again it kind of came in with the the drop shadows mm -hmm. i don't know that that could be kind of nifty maybe we'll see how we like it i'm not sure what i think of it but yeah look at that you can kind of have a little bit of a raised title bar hmm i like it yeah yeah, let's just roll with it for now. We're having fun today, right? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's paying me <clears throat> this. This is Matt's day. Uh, <laughs> all right. Now we probably want to put a color on this title bar. And because we're not freelancing here, we're just going to do... Uh, we could have a nice red. We could have a dark red. Mm, red's a little bit angry <laughs> so john uh says okay so horizontal container is controlled side by side like across the horizon and a vertical container is for controls up and down got it yep yes sir there you go nice little green container there to match the wall that i'm behind but look at that it has a nice little elevation there too which is which is kind of cool yeah why don't we call you know, this good? Yeah. I have a whole application template I use as a starting point for all my applications. And I encourage my students to either have the same or to buy mine. Agreed. So this really inspires me to go back and create a, a responsive one or have, because you can have some screens that are responsive and some that aren't right. But I guess you have that global settings that either keeps constraints or not on the, on the, um, 
on the dimensions. So maybe I'd have to have a, a separate uh, uh, you know, MS app file for that, a different project. But uh, yeah, my ideas are, are the, my brain's bursting with ideas now that, that you're showing us all this stuff. This is great. <laughs> My, my personal philosophy is every app that you should build, um, every app that you build should be responsive. Mm -hmm. If you're building a desktop app, people expect when you, you make the window very small or make the window very large, they'll be able to see it. People expect when you're on a tablet, whether you're using an iPad or Samsung, it's, it's going to kind of look the same way. Yeah. I think that if you're doing power apps every day and you live in it, um, I think that that's where you should be going, just responsive uh, everything. But but if you're just starting out, that's not where you want to start. You want to learn the fundamentals of Power Apps first and then build responsive apps. Building Zoom, build, building just non-responsive is fine, especially in the beginning. Like Don't, don't learn this lesson first. Yeah. Uh, learn I it later. That. And don't feel like you have to build every app for PC, mobile, and tablet because your users won't use them that way. Some will just be on PC, some will just be on phone. And let's face it, responsive doesn't mean the best design for, for everything, right? If you're building for a phone, you still want that tap bar at the bottom. You don't want that for a PC. If you're building for a PC, you want something mouse oriented, not tappable. So that, that's another lesson. Responsive does not mean design. For what I like about it is if later on your client, your customers say like, Oh, can we get a phone version of this app? You know, portrait versus landscape is if you did it this way first, it's like, Oh, it, it works either way. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally. I'll call this a uh, job. So what about the normal container? We know when to use vertical or horizontal container, but when do we use the normal container? I'll show an example of that. Um, maybe we can make a pop over here to, to illustrate that. But the horizontal, that the normal container is how you stack, you use it to stack controls on top of one another. It's kind of like a power apps group. Groups were the old way of grouping controls together, but with containers, they all have to just kind of fit inside that, that normal container. You can stack them over top of another. So if you're building something like a menu, it might be nice to have a, a very nice card underneath it right with the drop shadows but then you also want um vertically aligned items over top or something like that i'll show an example of that i think that's a natural place to go next year by yeah. the way do you know about emojis uh you can put them right in there yeah you hit your uh your windows key and then your period button so windows key period on anything that you're doing and then you I don't think have... I've ever used that inside of, of Power Apps. I've done it inside of emails and Word documents. Uh, that's yeah. really cool, man. Job interviews for the little uh, <laughs> little cat site there. That is really slick. I love yeah. it. One thing you got, you got to be careful about with emojis is uh, different devices just have different, uh, just, they look different on different devices. Mm -hmm. So they, they might show a little bit. What you see on a computer might not be what you get on, on your iOS phone or your Android tablet. Yeah. Okay. So I've, I've kind of been yammering away here, but we made our, our title bar. Maybe we'll put a little, uh, a couple icons in here just to make it look like a more fully featured app. Mm -hmm. So why don't we just add two quick icons? Uh, maybe we want a hamburger. What's that other thing? Is it a waffle? Yeah. A waffle. No waffle in here. Just, just making some hamburgers. Maps. <laughs> Color dot white. Oh, that's not what it. How do you? Oh, silly thing. Color dot white. Icon needs to be smaller. Great. Needs to be even smaller. Two. Cool. And so for this icon, I'm going to stretch it to fit the height. No, I'm not. What do I want to do here? Hit the, I want to be dead center. So I hit this little aligning container button and I want it to be centered vertically like that. Mm -hmm. So now it's just in the right spot. I don't have to write any crazy formulas to get it dead center. Um, and how about a little gears icon here for settings? Cause settings are quite common. So we'll do that too. 
And then if I want to shift this over to the other side of the title bar, I can either hit my icon here and go to reorder and move to the left, or there's a hotkey, which I'm always using. You can press control and then square brackets to move them back and forth inside the container. This is looking cool now, right? I got uh, yes. I got some stuff. Boom, boom, boom. The Ooh. Power App Sorcerer Supreme. Ooh. There you go. A real <laughs> Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Now we need to get the the gallery inside there. And the question is, how are we going to do that? Oops, I saw a little oopsie here. Do you see on this app how there's a? It's like rounded corners for this yeah. title bar here. Yeah, we need to do a little touch up. Border radius equals zero. Now we have a nice square one. Now it's square. Perfectionism. Try it out, folks. <laughs> it'll make your apps really nice, but it'll also kill you someday. <laughs> <laughs> Using containers is cool for responsive purposes, but if you have a gallery inside, you have containers and inside containers, you have controls. It makes it hard to patch selected items. You Is that it? Um, so that was from Julius. Uh, have you found that to be an issue at all? It makes it hard to patch selected items. I want to go back and take a look at this question here. If I, uh, if I do that, it's probably going to show Inception on the screen. Yeah, just maybe re re restate that again one more time. Yeah. Using containers is cool for responsive purposes, but if you have a gallery and inside you have containers and inside containers you have controls, it mm. makes it hard to patch selected items checkbox. Yeah, it can make it a little bit harder because uh, the gallery, the, those items can't directly access the galleries on select property. Oh, so wow. On select. Um, so you do have to write them inside those controls themselves instead of just relying on the galleries on select property. And we'll take okay. a look at that when we do a popover. But my my biggest trick in, in doing that is if you have something like the cards here, um, right? So I can't I can't write a on select on this. I can't do a um, parent dot select. I don't think. No, it just kind of errors out. So what I end up doing is I put a big transparent button over top of the whole gallery here mm. and nobody knows they're ever clicking it but it can access it because it's not inside of the, the container so that's that's my big hack but let's uh let's keep removing here so we have our job interviews and now we have a nice uh list screen uh a gallery right and so we ought to put that in this white space here and because it's, we don't actually need to put this inside of another container, like the gallery itself. If you think about a gallery, a gallery is actually a, a kind of a container. It's just a repeating container. Yeah. I'm going to save my power app here because I could make an oopsie. <laughs> I'm going to cut over here and I'm pasting it into the big one, right? The main container. Boom, there you go, it worked. <laughs> oh. First try. <laughs> nice. First try. It's fantastic, uh, love it. Yeah, okay, we're gonna burn our burn our ships here. Just like when Cortez came to the new <laughs> world, we're gonna delete that screen. <laughs> Hit this play button, and now, boom, just like, like that, right? Looking really good. This is great. Let's see how it looks on a tablet. So that's how it looks on a tablet sideways. That's how it looks on a tablet kind of uh, vertical there. Yeah, it's looking all right, right? Yeah. Um, it's looking all right. Fantastic. I like that minimalistic uh, design. Um, a lot of the UIs that, yeah. that I've seen you create look amazing. Oh, look at that. It kind of works this way too, right? So yeah. iPhone. My phone it even works on the iPhone 8. Does it work on the second gen iPhone? Oh my gosh. We can go back to the Stone Age, folks. How about <laughs> Samsung's? I don't know anything about Samsung, unfortunately. Does it work on a Samsung? Yeah, it looks okay in a Samsung. What about a Nokia? This was no plan. Nokia. The Nokia. The Nokia brick brick phone. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, no planning, but this is kind of still working out, right? Yeah. Um 
do we want to want to do next here? Yeah, there's there's two two different ways I want to go now. One thing you'll notice is on this really big screen, we have these really stretched out cards. I'm going to zoom in again, window size. Mm -hmm. And if I really zoom like that, like is that doing anything for anybody? I don't really like that, right? Mm. So we might need to add some gutters on the left and right. Maybe we want these cards to remain smaller and not expand to the full size of this screen. So maybe we'll take a look at that. The other thing I want to do is put a really fun looking background behind this. Yeah. Make it look like really cool. Ooh. And maybe that's where we'll go next. I'm gonna I'm gonna do the the Tim Shaw trick. The Tim Shaw trick. That's what I'm dubbing it. Um called SVG <laughs> backgrounds. And I will have to reshare my screen, I think, in yeah. order to do it. Can you see okay. me typing? Can you see me typing to another website right now? Uh no. Oh, okay. Going to another website and Um, stop screen sharing, uh, go to another tab, Chrome tab, SVG backgrounds, share. Okay. Can you see my screen now? Yeah. Cool. Go to backgrounds. Hey, by the way, why don't we just uh, give a quick shout out to some of the folks that are still here? Why don't we just read some names off in the chat for fun? Yeah, sure. Let me know who's so, here. Uh, Minty, I had an issue with cutting and pasting a form inside a container. It messes up the settings you had in the form. Have you ever experienced that, Matt? Yeah, Minty, I want to know if that's an edit form. An edit form is that out-of-the-box form that Power Apps creates automatically. And when you place it inside of a container or just generally try and manipulate it, sometimes it does reset itself back, and it's a real pain. And that's why I never use that control. I'm always using the... Um, like kind of build your own form from scratch. So I'd like to know if Minty, if that's what they are using or, or not. And then uh, Chris asked, what's the URL that one can go see some Power App screen designs? Um, did you mention one of those? Or I don't think I mentioned one. Yeah, he's just kind of wondering, I get, how can I get some screen inspiration, perhaps, or some design <laughs> inspiration? There's a couple places I go. Yeah. Um, I definitely like to go to uh, Dribble. Dribble is a place where UX designers go to show and share their designs. Like Behance.com is cool. Um, Tailwinds.io is a really cool site too, where you can get some basic ideas for components. So if I look at Tailwinds uh, components, can we go to yeah, components or templates? So this is this is an actual. Um, pack of components for like pro devs, but you can get some inspiration here because you can look at something like, uh, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? I want something that looks like a uh, card heading, right? Oh, that looks like a cool design I could probably implement in Power Apps there, right? Or maybe I want something that looks like uh, a form layout. Oh, okay, that's a cool, simple looking form, right? Maybe mm -hmm. I want something with a uh, more of a more of a template here, and you can kind of go through these. So that's just kind of where I get my design inspiration from. Let's go back to those Ooh. SVG backgrounds. This is this is a hot tip. This is the, yeah. the Tim Shaw All tip. Right. Okay, so solid color backgrounds, great, but also kind of boring. Um, yeah. Pictures as backgrounds, awesome, but they usually take up a lot of space and they don't load really quickly, right? If you have a 4K picture in the background of your Power App, looks mm -hmm. great, but it's not gonna be very fast. SVG backgrounds, hit that hit that sweet spot. And what an SVG background is, is it's a, it's a high fidelity background that you can edit, you can, you can kind of design the color, but it's really, really small. Um, it's probably no more than 10 kilobytes, or you can even just implement it to, in your app as code. So yeah. we can pick any, background from this website, SVG backgrounds, and use it in our in our app design. And Looks it's svgbackgrounds.com. Yeah, and I did uh, freebies, right? Go, go for the freebies. You, you can pay for it too. I mean, it's good to pay people for the things that they're doing. I, I totally agree with that. But if you're just starting out, maybe use some freebies. So I can, I can pick any one of these designs here and import it 
into into Power App. But you want to stick with something that's probably a little bit, uh, what do I like to say, like more minimalistic. Something busy like this might not look great. Something with bright colors looks awesome on the screen here but you probably don't want it as a background because it's going to be too distracting yeah. maybe we can go with these little these little points right here and you can kind of change the color mm. so what if i have a nice uh what was our theme it was like green or gray yeah i want the little points to change here so we'll have some bright green points Ooh, popping <laughs> <laughs> we are popping. This is cool. Whoa. Ah, Ooh. yeah, it's like a fractal kind of design, right? Yeah. Ooh, look at that. Nifty, nifty. Uh, do we like that? It's almost too dark. What's cool about SVGs is that you can actually change um, the stuff yeah. in your application, right? Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can do it on the fly if a user actually really wants to customize what they're doing. Like, go do it to it, right? Yeah. What if we put a more muted gray? How do you find grays in here? I, at, at the risk of like just totally messing around with the colors for half an hour here. <laughs> That's something I could I could totally be doing, right? Yeah. But yeah. Why don't I just kind of do this? Why don't uh, we'll I think see this how it's like helpful for people because they might like, oh, how do I, you know? Yeah. I'm not that smart at this. I'm just dragging stuff around and seeing what I think might look okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we hit export now, and you can you can export it as CSS, as inline as svg or or illustrator so if i clicked on the oh sorry if i click download you can just download it as an svg file and incorporate it into your app another cool thing you can do is you can copy this uh as an inline svg and then place it into your into your power app yeah uh background image but there's there's a little bit of a trick to it because i'm getting lots of errors right now right <laughs> that's really really funny <laughs> oh, but I haven't moved back to my power app yet, have I? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm stuck on there. So we'll stop our screen sharing. We'll reshare. Unshare. Reshare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I paste, I went to uh, the background image of the screen. I pasted it in. It's like, oh, it's kind of throwing up. It's That's not uh, great. Yeah. So we start off by putting some nice little, uh, some quotes around that. Okay, it's not it's not showing yet, but then we need to add another little pattern to to put the SVG in there. And just let me look it up. Darren can maybe throw it in the chat afterwards. Uh, so Matthew and I, don't, I'm always referencing my own site, so I'm going back to my own site to find this uh, code. Yeah, Hard what um, what do I search for? SVGs, SVG images and Power Apps. Yeah. So what I'm what I'm pasting in here, there we go. First of all, sure it uh, is is working. Maybe we need to disable the fill. Oh, I probably have a fill on the container, and that's why I can't see it. Mm -hmm. So I like my fill as much as I like my fill here. I'm going to change it to color dot trans. And now. Okay, so it's it's almost kind of working. Um, so we've got we've got to make this uh, stretch out. Then I'll go back and explain how did that work. So if I do a um, image position, we don't want it to fit the screen. We want it to kind of fill the screen like that. Yeah, these things are really really big now. So what did I do? I went to the the list screen there. And I went to uh, background image and I pasted in that code, mm -hmm. but I also put this really nifty kind of prefix here in code URL and a little bracket at the end. Mm -hmm. And what what did that do? Well, it's telling Power Apps that the background image is encoded as an SVG. This is called a data URI. 
and it's a text string that represents a file, a file being an image in this case. And so you encode the URL at these little brackets, and then you can add any SVG image that you want in there as, as code. I like it. But the really cool thing you can do here is you could do something like change this color, FF300. Now my background looks a little bit different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love SVGs. Great. They're they're great, yeah. And so the way that this one turned out here, I think that the dots are a little bit uh, big, and maybe therefore like a little bit distracting. But you could you could change that inside of your free SVG maker that I showed you there, and really customize everything. So yeah. I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it because I think it's a cool example. Um, I do think that the dark background though probably could be a little bit lighter because I can't even see the drop shadow on, on my stuff now, right? Yeah. So maybe I will just be a control freak and just make it, make it a little bit lighter like that and see what happens. Maybe I will go lighter. Do, 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 do. Yeah, well, you know, I'm not gonna mess with it. That's that's fun. Now that, that's basically like part of the lesson. So that's cool. Um, yeah. So what can we? What do we do now? I think this this works on tablet. This works on phone. This works on other stuff. And we could probably stand to add a couple more, a couple more gallery little chits in here so it scrolls. But we also don't have to do that. Uh, don't have to do that either. Yeah. I think I like where this is kind of starting out. Absolutely. This is fantastic. Is right what time is it? It is, uh, we've been live an hour and a half. Shoot. Feels like half an hour, man. <laughs> and I'm Why available for another hour if you want, if you're available for another 30. Um, what else would you like to do in this session? Yeah, I'd like to show how to make a little popover menu so that you can actually input the like the user data. We're not going to hook it up to data, but I'm just going to show how you would design that. Okay. So just a little form that pops over and says what's the candidate, what's their experience, what's their uh, what's their rating, that type of thing. Uh huh. Um, but why don't we go off share screen here for a minute? And. Yeah, let's just let's just chat for a couple minutes and just take take a quick break here and just kind of yeah. So I'm gonna read right. off some of the the comments um, if you're okay with that. Um, okay, so Kurt says it's understandable to use old work as reference when you use something less than ten percent of the time. And then uh, Christoph says, uh, you must calculate the height width of those inner containers and make sure you update the parent height or width based on those if you want it to resize or have long. I don't know if this, they that might be sense. responding to each other. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense to me. If your text size is increasing, increasing, or so you have like a really long text inside of a box, if you make it smaller, it's going to cut off at the end. It's going to truncate as the screen size gets smaller. But what happens if you actually want to make that box uh, expand to be bigger and kind of like fit that fit that card as it's yeah as as it's kind of working itself through there, right? Yeah. So you want the container to grow uh, when the screen size is smaller because the text won't get cut off that way. Do I have a blog on Paraps hotkeys? I I don't. Um, Reza Durrani has a very early video on that one. I think it was probably back in 2020 when he started. So go look that up. He has a hotkeys. Uh, there for YouTube. Tim, Tim Shaw says you can set it to tile as well. Yeah, that's a, that's a tip for the backgrounds that I was making. You can, oh yeah, Tim, you're right about that. You smart cookie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you are a smart cookie. Yeah, I should have tiled it, right? Oh man, Tim, where are you on this stream, buddy? I need you, bro. <laughs> oh my God, that looks so much better. Okay, this is- Oh, you gotta share your screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Tim Shaw bailing me out again. 
so these dots here look really, really big and just kind of strange. Um, but that's because I set it to fill the entire window. Now, this SVG that I created was a pattern, right? So if we tile it instead, they're kind of smaller. And now these look like little stars in the sky. So yeah, there you go. Absolutely. Now, one option, Matthew, is that we have a follow-up to this one at a later time, maybe in a week, maybe in a month, whenever your schedule opens up. For, do you like that idea? Or do you just want to... Um, yeah, we'll figure it out. Here. We'll figure What's it out. Probably do, we'll figure it out. We'll probably do like a, a different topic if we can get back together on something. Yeah. Don't want to be okay. one for Tony, right? But uh, and then I also want to activate you, sir, and get you, get you coding, and uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and kind of be your color commentator as you do the play by play. I think that would be really yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to listen to you and follow the comments and get URLs and stuff. Um, and we could, we, we could, ha I can have up to 10 panelists on, on this, uh, Ooh. live stream. So we could have quite a few, um, of people. So maybe we could bring on Tim next time. We could, uh, <laughs> ask for other people that, that you respect in the community and we could have a panelist yeah. of, and we all, you know, we could cover little portions of a topic or, you know, we could do whatever, you know, I think there's lots of fun ideas there that we got to discuss for sure. Um, up to 10 people. Wow. How many, how many chairs can we fit on the deck of the Titanic? I don't know, but, uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Yeah. We can tile. Yeah. yeah. I'd love to bring some of the buds on there. Um, yeah. Hey, I just want to say thanks to Amir there. He says we need a collab of both of you each week. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, bud. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, I, I really respect uh, Matthew and everything he does and uh, i was so happy when he did uh if you haven't seen it go out to uh, youtube do a search for darren nice and matthew devaney and yep. you should see it and i'll also link it here and um well and uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah this is this has been i've had the most turnout for for this so i know we were both, both plugging it and stuff i, I would say you have yeah. a, a much bigger following than i do um and and perhaps more people are more interested about what you have to say and stuff i i i <laughs> I think maybe the the most uh, live stream uh, at at once I had maybe fifteen or twenty. So um, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is great. Yeah, no, that's cool. I think that uh, streaming is kind of some undiscovered country for for power apps and power platform in general. You don't really see as many people doing it. it requires people to attend, right? So yeah. I just again want to say thanks to everyone who showed up so far. Still going to do a little bit more. Um, so, so that's always a challenge, right? But then it's also about hitting the the right topic too. Right. I can go to a user group and talk about something that no one's interested in and we'll get like 10 folks. Right. But yeah. I've also had one where we did how to build a custom connector for the first time or how to do ALM. And we had like 60 people show up to a user group on a, on a Wednesday. And I'm like, wow. oh, OK, I get it. Right. Like it's it's not just about the people, the personality, the where at it's it's really making about um are we hitting the spots that people like want to want to learn? Right. And, and do we this make is a spot there? that I really needed and uh, my students needed. So you picked them. You picked it really well. Data's King says, I want to see how you built that crossword app game. Yeah, that, that's a good idea for, for future content there. That was uh, one of the first things I did when I got into the community, I made a little game and went on the power apps community call and it all kind of snowballed from there. So yeah. Uh, wow. You, uh, you must've followed me for a little while, uh, Mr. King there. So, <laughs> so thank you. Um, uh, just shout out right, to Bar Bargav Patel there. I'm probably butchering the name, but it says I've been using your Matthew Devaney. I've been using the power apps you made for SVG icons. Thank you for that. So yeah, appreciate it. Appreciate it, bud. Absolutely. Yeah, got a bunch of free SVGs there that you can use. They're 2,000 fluent UI containers. Matthew, yeah. reply to my YouTube comment on one of your previous videos, please. Tell me what your comment is. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what your comment is on this chat. Yeah, I've, I've only done a handful of YouTube videos. Um, I would like to do more. Here, I think here's the last thing I want to talk about before we get back into building again, right? Should Matt Devaney do a YouTube? Should Matt Devaney do more streams with Darren? Should Matt Devaney be on, on like more video <laughs> in general, right? Right. Um, so my thinking's starting to evolve on that. My daughter was was quite young 
um, right now she's, she's growing up and going to school. And just, first of all, it's just very hard to do that with a, you know, a small kid. Right. And everyone's making noise. Uh, love, love everybody. To, like I love my family. Right. That's, it's just hard to find those spaces to record sometimes, but now we're kind of getting to that spot where it makes more sense. And I, uh, I want to practice and get better at video editing. Right. I want to get some better lighting. I want to get a little bit better equipment. Mm -hmm. I want to, but really want to learn the art of video production and how to make a great video and how to make it nice and concise, like my blog so that you can get value from them right away. But uh, if I do this, we're going to go on a journey together. I'm not going to come out fully formed. I'm not going to come out like, like uh, Reza or Shane or April or uh, Dan Christian or yeah, pragmatic jokes, like any of those folks or Darren Neese. <laughs> not gonna come out of a womb like that, right? Um, it's gonna t- it's gonna take some time. You're gonna see some rough edges, but if, if folks want to go on that journey, I'm thinking about going there in the summer. I'm thinking about doing a a summer break from blogging and just going to videos um, for the summer potentially, and doing some of my greatest hits from my blog as videos. So yeah. if, if that's a ride you want to go on, let me know and encourage me. I'm not promising anything at this point, but it's just something I'm, I'm playing with. Well, I'd love for you to go over this uh, pipe dream. Uh, game that you created <laughs> yeah that one's a that, that one is a cool one yeah yeah i was really impressed by that um, yeah. so there's this one and then um so all of his links are here so matt did you want to continue on uh going yeah. down this this topic here yeah let's, let's do that <laughs> we are ready just do it says roberto <laughs> <laughs> Just suck it to my veins. Put, put your Nike shoes on. Let's do it, man. <laughs> exactly. I was going to show my, uh, can I do this on a live stream? Can I show you my socks? Speaking of shoes. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Let me, let me uh, uh, blow you up here. Um, let me, sh- uh, hide those are some, uh, these are some window socks I have. Windows colors. There we go. Yeah. Very cool. Power app, power platform t-shirt, right? Yeah. Ripping the, ripping the brand. Uh, John Brennan says, uh, if you're going to do a YouTube bright purple background seems to be the trend. <laughs> 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 yeah. Have to, have to work on my, my background here. Right. Everyone else has a very nice background. Darren, you, you, you're killing it there, buddy. Um, <laughs> I look like I'm on a green screen, but this is just a green wall. <laughs> Get a less squeaky chair too. Cool. Actually, I've invested in a silent mouse, so it doesn't click as as well. Okay. Um, let's get back to the app for maybe uh, half an hour, maybe 45 minutes more, something like that. I just want to show how to build a quick popover screen. We're going to go through it like really quickly, just kind of speed of light. Yeah. And uh, and do this thing right, and then after that, I'll just kind of stick around and maybe Darren, I'll. It's gonna. I how do you just kind of chit chat? I was gonna say something else that's probably not appropriate for stream. Shoot oh, yeah. something, <laughs> um, America. Uh, yeah, <laughs> all people's freedoms. Right? I'm Canadian, by the way. Sorry. So let's uh, let's get back to power apps here. <laughs> Okie doke. Um, what do I want to do next? I want to create kind of a, a popover menu so that you can kind of fill this in as a form. You might be tempted to go ahead and create another screen to do this. And that's perfectly okay. Uh, just for this example, I, I just felt, felt like doing a popover mm-hmm. and you might be wondering what the heck is a popover? Let, let's get there really, really fast. Let's just mock it up on the screen. So you know what I'm talking about. Here's, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to insert another container over top of this. I'm going to show you what I mean. So here we have um, another container and it's sitting over top of everything. Little app dot height. Oh, sorry. I screwed up here. <laughs> Always saying sorry because I'm Canadian, right? <laughs> a? A, yeah, A. Here's here's what I want to do. So I want to create another menu that comes over top of this one. I want to give it a white background. 
color dot white. I want it to have a little bit of a uh, drop shadow there. I want it to have the same corners. And what I want it to do is I want it to pop over top of this like a menu. So mm. you don't have to travel to the next screen. It's just a modal. But by mm. the way, we really need to de-emphasize de what's going on in the background and make sure people can't click it because if they can, that's, that's going to defeat the purpose of having something popping over. Mm. So I threw a vertical container up on the screen really, really quickly. And I also want to place it inside of another container. It's going to be my screen protector. You know, like you have on your phone, a screen protector. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Vertical <laughs> container. And I'm going to make the height and the width. Height and width of the app. So app.width and app.height. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is place that inside of this container. Oh my gosh, this kind of blew up. Uh, because it's stretched, I don't want that to happen. So I'm setting in this. I'm setting this container's properties back to not flexible height and not flexible um, width. Right. I'm just kind of centering that, and I have a fixed width at the moment. And if I choose the container it's living in, I can. Right now, it's orienting it to the top um, instead of the middle. But I want this to always be kind of centered on the screen like that. So I just choose choose to center it instead. Which is, which is really nice. I'm going to just make this a little smaller. Now, I also talked about de-emphasizing the screen behind it. That's really important. Yeah. Let's fill this with, is, is 000 black? I think it is, right? If I do one, okay. Yeah. Maybe I can make this like a 3%. No, not enough contrast, 10%. No, it still kind of looks like, there you go. See what happens if I do this. So if I'm if I'm navigating through the app, now everything is kind of de-emphasized and you're really just focusing on this modal right here. Yeah. So that I think that's gonna work. You could even go further with it. And there's no like no hard value for what this number should be. I'm just typing in percentages until my eyes can visually see like enough contrast between what's in the background and what's in the foreground. If we went to something like 50, I don't know, that might be too much. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stick with, I think 40 is the sweet spot for me right now. I'm experimenting. There you go. There you go. Now that now it's like really nice and bright and the rest of the background is just like, eh, right? Yeah, I like <laughs> it. Absolutely. Get a lot. I'm going to read off some of these uh, questions. Uh, this probably goes back to a few minutes ago. Can you use a short video clip as a Power Apps background? Have you ever tried to do that? I haven't, but there's a man by the name of Alan Chai who I believe has. I think what the listener is talking about, when you go to a website, sometimes on their hero banner or hero page, you see like a little video playing in the background. It's just like people biking or doing something in an office or people listening, right? Just something inspiring mm -hmm. when they're trying to sell a product. Yeah. Um, I believe that's possible. I don't have something off the top of my head on how to tell you how to do that. Unfortunately, yeah, you would think that would that would take up a lot of space or would bloat your app quite a bit. You'd think um, so. Probably depends on the format. Like, what if it's a what if it's an AVIF, right? Or what okay. if it's a WebP kind of? Uh, I wonder if those can be like GIFs, right? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Then Data is King says, "Can you make the menu move in a different location at runtime?" top or bottom or that type of thing you can yeah maybe yeah. a fly out menu or yeah so let's build our basic menu here our basic form i'm going to make this a little bit let me make it a little bit taller so what are some things that we want to have in the form we want the candidate's name we want the ability to review with stars we want description we had something like gpa skills right that type of thing mm-hmm Absolutely. So why don't we just steal a couple of controls to start from our, our previous container? We probably need a date and time when that interview happened too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, 
So I just pasted that label in there. I'm stretching it. I'm unflexing the height. Probably do you want to make this a little bit uh, taller or bigger text? Oh, wait, we actually want somebody to fill this information in, don't we? Yeah, That's what content. we actually want to do here, right? Yeah. What should we call this menu here? Something like uh, edit interview? Yeah, edit details. Yeah, edit details. Sure. I like that, edit details. A little bigger. And again, I want to pop it out from the edges of this, this container. So I'm putting a padding on it of, of maybe 20 on all sides. Padding is really important. It's something that's underappreciated in Power Apps or just like first time designers in general. So just always make sure that you're adding a pad to, to stuff so it doesn't run up against the corners. If I put it too close, it feels like this design is kind of, something is bothering me about it. it it's kind of like suffocating me a little bit because these are too close to the edges. But if I just bump it out like that, it looks looks a little bit better. So there you go, there's my, there's my edit details there. This is great. Yeah. Let's rename our container. So we'll do con. Uh, con list. What is this? This is a uh, edit modal. Oops. So sometimes when I rename stuff, the <laughs> this is an unfortunate thing about containers. They they kind of lose their alignment. Oh so my just, goodness! Wow. Yeah, yeah. This is why it's good to name stuff just at the start. Name it from the get go. Yeah. Call this our edit card. Ooh, silly, silly thing. Now I don't even remember what was. What did that do? Oh, it that's unstretched one, it. That's one of the reasons I, I almost refuse to use forms. Like I, in some of my beginning apps, I would spend hours and hours customizing the form just right. And then maybe I'd change the border or something and it completely reset a lot of the custom stuff I did. And yeah. uh, that's brutal. And, and I feel for you and we shouldn't have to go through that. I think that that, has been that way for a long time. So yeah. I don't honestly see it getting fixed, but for containers, <laughs> I'm strongly advocating for a fix there. Yeah. It, it's just not pain that a first time developer would want to go through or even a third time or a 10th time or a hundred time like me, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so now in our edit details, we probably want to have a list of rows to fill in. And we maybe we want the label of the field to fill in on the left, and maybe we want the the thing that they fill in on the right. But that's also not great for for mobile phones. So what I'm trying to decide is, do I want a form that's completely stacked, like one column and the label and the and the field are like are like this? So I'll just throw it in there. Do I want this insert text input like that? Or do I kind of want them side by side where the text input is to the left of the, is, is to the right of the text? Yeah. I think I want it like this. I really do think I want it like this because on a mobile phone, it's really hard to see the label and the text input side by side. And I've, I've seen some apps, they'll, they'll just put the, whatever the label is, put it inside the hint text and completely yeah. avoid. I don't know that I like that idea, but that's some of the things I've seen. I'm gonna save my app here because I want I want to know if I can just update my theme and get the text input that I want, mm -hmm. but it might break other things in the app. Oh, good, okay, good. Sometimes when you change that theme, if you have other controls that you just left the default properties on, it just changes your entire theme, which should happen, which is intentional by the way, and should happen. But uh, yeah, I just didn't wanna screw us up here. So this is looking a little bit wide. I don't like how wide this is. Now it's too small. Be okay. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of speaking of shrinking in width, I got some new jeans in the mail today. Oh Been yeah, working out and I uh, yeah, I, I bought a pant, pant size down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't fit my pants anymore. They're always kind of dropping. 
<laughs> with the belt on and my wife is like you look like you're from the year 2000 um baggy <laughs> pants right now so you should get some new ones I'm like okay <laughs> but accidentally bought one size too small yeah um, in the waist still i still kind of fit them it was just a little bit too tight but i could still get into them i was so proud of myself i found some um, jeans online that that are all the jeans are just it's um all the material not just the waist but all the way through is like almost it has part spandex to it <laughs> <laughs> give a little give um yeah i need, love I need it, love it. probably lose more than you have to lose <laughs> um so i'm keeping an eye on the comments here um so there's one comment uh by christoph you can drop regular container with an html text box with some blur filter and blur the background um and drop responsive container on top of it all centered inside we can use backdrop filters that's true um there's just really i think what he's talking about is the the blur property in css maybe mm, okay I've, Heard about this recently through folks like Tim and folks like Christine K and mm -hmm. folks like Yusef Sharif on Twitter. And yeah, they figured out that you can use the blur property in CSS to make uh, like you, you take the image behind it, but it kind of makes it look blurry and more artistic. Mm -hmm. You can also do like glass morphic designs too, which is mm -hmm. making your power apps menus look like they're glass, kind of like a, like an iOS type of thing. Yeah. And I'm not an iOS fanboy. I just have Apple stuff. Don't hate me, yeah. please. <laughs> it's just Chris, I started it off with the iPod touch and I just never bothered to learn anything new. Yeah. Yeah, my wife loves <laughs> Apple products. Um Chris I, Chris says, is there some sort of way to CSS a power app screen as you would say in HTML5? Oh, I wish. I think <laughs> that what he's talking about. And again, folks, like, please put responses in the chat here so we can follow follow up there. Yeah. Like, have a CSS style sheet that's just going to influence all of your app. And you say, I want my text boxes to be this color and my fonts to be this size and so on and so forth. And then kind of maybe even tag out individual elements. And fortunately, it just doesn't work like that. I think there's some cool stuff coming in terms of theming, but we're really just not there yet. Yeah. I'm optimistic, though. I'm optimistic that we'll get something. And then John says, Darren, the hint text as a label, not good idea as it disappears when you click in the text <laughs> box. Ab absolutely. I completely agree with you. Yes, um, sir. Keep <laughs> and then um, let's see. Andre says, why Why do you use the theme in that instance? Oh, I use the theme because I was just being uh, lazy here on stream and not wanting to come up with my own. And I know that the text box is there. Like you can give them a nice little like gray outline now, yeah. which, which I like, it's very minimalistic text box. If I did this and went back to the original, I don't know. Why, why are the borders of that so bright? I know why is it blue. It's, and it's now it looks like a the, power app app. Like, Oh, that's a power app. <laughs> <laughs> Not in a good way either. Right. <laughs> Darren just insulting me on live stream here, folks. <laughs> it looks like a power app. No, I, the best compliment you can get is it should just not look like a power app. Yeah, um, best couple of minutes. Yeah. Wait, that's yep. a power apps application? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a power apps application. Say what? <laughs> so I was just kind of being lazy there. Uh, this this is what I do for mockups to make my text boxes look fine. Okay. Here I want to change this to a bit of a, a multi line. So I'm going top, bottom. <laughs> Note says Matthew Devaney, hilarious. Uh, Lorem Ipsum text, right? That's what we like. Use Lorem uh, yeah. Ipsum or use like Cupcake X Ipsum or yeah, other Ipsum. Absolutely. Lorem Ipsum is just some fancy like Greek text. Let me go. Find, I'll paste that in there. There you go. Looks a little bit better. Lorem Ipsum. This is just what you want to use when you're when you're just designing, but you don't want people to focus on actual words. Okay, so we got our nice little popover menu here. Uh, what else do we need to round this out? We need buttons now. Yeah, we need buttons so we can dismiss this this mother trucker. Um, <laughs> did I just say that? I guess I did. Oh, fudge. So. What's good? What's good that that your um, 
holding back some of your or changing your words is that um, whenever I monetize a video, um, there's a, a like is, is there any mature language, and then it sort of cuts back on the monetization or the, the what the channel is known for the type of content it has. So, um, you know, so for <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Kurt says, I really appreciate you coming in, in this morning and demonstrating all of this. This is really good stuff. And I'm excited to practice these things to learn them better. Absolutely, Kurt. Yeah, thanks for commenting. Good. Yeah. I'm just so happy people are saying uh, some nice things about me these days because uh, all week all I heard was uh, thanks for the wildfires. I live in Canada. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a picture of... Uh, some states on, on the east coast of all this uh crazy stuff and i guess they're blaming it on you guys up there what are you guys doing up there <laughs> <laughs> blame canada not coming from my province province is kind of like a state here that's coming from elsewhere it's it's a i guess a combination of lightning stroke strikes and then folks also starting fires when they shouldn't and being irresponsible so it's, it's about 50 50 but yeah yeah there's there's nicer things to talk about than wildfires right yeah <laughs> <laughs> if there's anyone uh, in the chat there I'd just love to hear what your what your weekend plans are just tell me are you uh are you gonna go and build some more power apps this weekend hang out with the fam have a barbecue so jared said he made a service desk template responsive already that was pretty good Ooh. He already Ooh. took what you did and applied it. So maybe he's going to work on that app. <laughs> you got to be kidding me, really? That's awesome. A yeah, service desk or what would you call them? Case case management, ticket management apps are a very good use case for power apps. Yeah. Now that I've followed up on my OCD and I've renamed all these controls, which is very, very important <laughs> to have a name scheme. We need to put some buttons at, at the bottom here. Uh, we could have an OK and a cancel. I think that's probably a good idea because sometimes you just want to say Eh, I, I screwed up. I don't want to um, actually make these changes. So let's go and do that. Yeah. So now if we, so this is a vertical container. We've been putting all these controls in, but buttons are side to side. So I can't just stack those buttons. I guess I could if I wanted to and put OK on the top and cancel on the bottom. But I think most folks expect them left to right. So once again, we do a little bit of a horizontal container. And I will throw two buttons in there. Maybe I'll just throw one for now. I'll, I'll make the second one in a minute. And after you put that horizontal container in there for the buttons, so this is buttons. We can shift this over to the to the right instead and allows us to to orient that in a different way. It's also kind of bumping up against the other text box there. So we probably want to put some top pad on it. Probably more than 20, maybe more like 40, maybe. Yeah. Is there a way to make it um, align vertically aligned to the bottom? Uh, just like this? Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, you can vertically align it to the bottom uh, too, for sure. And what I like about what you just suggested is it, I guess this button is square and needs to be rounded. Mm, Why did yeah. this button come in with like one round corner and the rest are square? That's hilarious. <laughs> ah, the joys of live streaming power apps. <laughs> so that looks, that's, that's getting there, right? We'll do okay. A little bit big, but yeah, I, I like what you suggested there because it has an even, um, even spacing between the bottom and, and the right hand side. I do like that. And if I'm allowed to do border radius on these controls, I probably ought to make this all look nice and uh, nice and like that. And again, OCD kicking in. Let's just make it uh, okay. Whatever, we'll leave it at that. Okie dokie. So this is this is a little bit bigger than we need it to be. Let's change the, the height of this. Maybe we just make it 60. This is the fun of this. We just Now we just play and we use our eyes here. Mm -hmm. We want to put, 
Woke. <laughs> yeah. What I want to do is I just want to give it enough daylight between the f the last field of the form and the OK button because I want to indicate to the user that this is this is not a part of the list of the things that you're entering. Now you're required to do something. It's like a separate separate section. Yeah. So a little bit of design principles uh, coming into play there. Maybe the button could be a little bit chunkier. No, 40. There you go. That's, that's a nice big button to hit. OK, now there's just way too much white space until the end, right? Yeah. There was a there was a listener or a stream viewer. What do we call stream viewers? Like uh, the viewers? Call them the viewers, yeah. right? There's a question, how do you make sure that the container is always fitting the size of what's inside of it? How do we make it grow or expand based on that? This is a really yeah. nifty tip. I didn't I didn't know this for like a year, a year and a half after when containers came out. But what you can do is you can go to the height of this container and you can say, okay, the height is 600 right now, but I really want it to come to the bottom of where this card is right here. Yeah. And maybe add a little bit extra padding. So what I do is I say, Oh, this card is height. I want to change it to the height of the, sorry, the position of that menu, right? Where it starts mm -hmm. plus the, the height of that menu. Mm -hmm. And then maybe a little bit extra for padding like that. Now it's always going to fit the size of the container that's in it, right? Yeah. So if Fantastic. I make it 200, it just grows. If I make that, it shrinks. But the cool thing is if you have um, a label with with auto height on, right? Because you might have really long text, then you can make your your form grow and shrink as you as you kind of go along. So that is that is the nifty part. Um cadet blue, that's our favorite color. So we'll hit that. So that looks decent. Maybe a little smaller. No, I think people's thumbs will not hit that at that width. There you go. It's kind of perfect. Yeah, I like it. Yep. And then maybe we'll put a cancel button beside it. And I'm not going to worry about the hover properties on this and everything because we're, we're focusing on the responsive here. But what if I do this? I go cancel just like that. Cancel should not be the same color. Color should be white fill should be white the color should be the uh, color dot cadet blue so we've kind of got that scheme going there i probably don't even need the gap in between anymore because it'll just there you go you've got your edit details and cancel uh I guess I could put a border on this if I wanted to that was the same color. So border color, I guess I don't have that there. Cadet blue. Um, bottom two. So could also like do something like that as, as well. This is starting to look like a respectable app here. I like this. Respectable, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be a respectable channel here. Uh, we're building a respectable app and not using any any bad language, right? YouTube strikes. Emer says, just recapping, we prefer using containers for something as small as buttons, just so that when orientations are changed, it adjusts by itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so you don't have to think about where you're positioning them. Like I didn't put any thought into what pixel exactly do I have to put these buttons. I just said, put it on the right. Yeah. Right? Right's good enough. And I'll rename this cancel. And then let's just make this thing uh, operable and then we'll be, we'll close out the stream. So I built a nifty little like details menu and hopefully it's going to look good at, at most like app sizes. Um, what if we change this to to that, right? It's still kind of popping up in the in the middle of the screen. Um, but we need it to close and open. We need it to close and open when somebody clicks something. I'm not going to worry about writing the data today because I just mm -hmm. we're focusing on design. Yeah, design, 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 folks. Yeah. 
But what we want to do is we want to set a variable here. But Darren, there are two types of ways you can set variables. You can use a set function and update context. Do you use both of them or do you just use the set function for globals? I use update context every every way uh, as a default. And then yeah, yeah. if I need to use it across two screens, then I'll, I'll create a global. I like, I like that too. Do? That's exactly what I do. And then if I use an update context variable here, right, which is just scope to the screen, I can copy this modal to any other screen. And I don't have to worry about it being open when I go to another screen because I've yeah. shared the same kind of kind of variable. Absolutely. So, so I'm going to write update context. I'll say LOC because it's a local variable to the screen. Show edit details total equals false because when they click cancel or okay, it's going to close it. Mm -hmm. Go like that. Boom, boom, boom. Now, how do we determine the visibility of this? The great, this is why I built everything on, on a single container here with the, with the click shield and like mm -hmm. the screen protector and then also making it kind of transparent. But another reason that you do this is so you can have everything inside of the container hide when, when the variable is false. Mm -hmm. So here I'll put the, the variable name, show edit details modal. Now everything is hidden because it's not active anymore, but we need to also create a way to, to pop this open. And earlier on in the stream, we had um, somebody ask, well, the, you, you're putting stuff inside this container here and we can't use the select parent method, right? To grab the, to do, to do some action that's based on the on select of the gallery. So what do we, what do we actually do here? And this is where we bring transparent buttons into play. Um, I do need to go like this. I need to go to my gallery. Let's see if I can even select a specific row in the gallery. Um, it's it's after you've got your containers in there, it can get a little bit hard to add something on top. Yeah, so I'm gonna add a button like that. Oh, now, um, a lot of times I use icons to do what you're about to do. Is there any advantage to using buttons, or is that just a a preference? Well, I know with the button, at least you get the hand little thing on your cursor on buttons unless you're clicked onto the icon. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it changes the they, changes um, the changes to uh, something similar to the hand. Um, yeah, I remember right, but I think as long as you're indicating to a user of the right, like a PC user that they're hovering on something clickable. Yeah, then it's fine. Button button is my default. So here I'm, I'm making it cover the entire width of the gallery and height of the gallery by doing parent dot template height and width. And you'll remember that from earlier in the, in the lesson. Um, I'm taking away the text and now I'm going to make this thing just completely transparent. I'm going to call this button dot uh, list slash list slash uh, select candidate. And here I'm just cycling through all the properties that are going to make this transparent. I'll do color dot transparent and I'll do Filled out transparent, color dot transparent, order to color. I'm going like a mile a minute because this is yeah. just boring stuff you don't want to watch here. <laughs> then I'll do self dot border color so I can quickly reference uh, by putting the other properties. So self border color, self dot pressed color, no, self dot color, circular reference. Man, that brings me back to my accounting days when I just worked in Excel. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Circular reference, Matt. Do something about it. Self.fill. Press.fill. Go cool. Um, I'm also going to turn the border style to none so that my focus border never shows up because I hate that guy. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, accessibility. <laughs> just, <laughs> it just looks ugly. Um, and then for the on select of this button, this is the, the PS de resistance. We've got the select parent on here instead. Mm -hmm. So now for my gallery property, I can do update context, grab, grab like that, set this to true, boom, boom. Now I'm driving my app and I hit this button, it's going to show up at a details or 
like hit okay and you see this is blue right you, you know that i have to fix these properties but we're just flying yeah. fast here yeah. so you hit okay but yeah look at that now it's popping up like the little modal and it, and it looks great and it's always going to show in the center of the screen no matter what size um what size you have it if i go like that you could also make it stretch to fill the width of the screen if you want but you know we're we're going pretty long here so i think that's uh it's good enough there i think if uh I had my druthers. There's one last thing I want, want to look at. And I'm just going to take a moment to think of if this would actually take any time or not. Mm -hmm. I just don't like how on this really big screen here, window size, it really stretches out far, far. And yeah. you have to look so far across to see that. Yeah. So is there what, a way to do like a max width like you do in CSS? Yes. Yes. I, I, <laughs> I wish we could apply CSS, by the way. Um, <laughs> But I think it has to do with the screen size, right? Like if you have a, a small or a medium screen or maybe even a large you want to fill, but maybe you don't want it to happen on the extra larges. So here's what we're, I think that's what we want to do. This ultimately might be too much to write up. We'll take one stab at it. It's always good to end off at a spot where you're failing, right? In a, in a lesson or tutorial, you just don't look like what you're doing. I think I bought a bit of credibility though so far. <laughs> um, <laughs> So let's just try something with the width here. Okay. So I set the, instead of doing stretches, I set it to the, to center in this container now. And it, it still looks like it's stretching because we've got app.width. That's cool. Maybe what we got to do is do something like this. If the app.activescreen.size is less than or equal to screen size dot medium. Show me the app dot width. Otherwise, maybe do like six hundred, something, something like that. No, it doesn't look good. Um, I want maybe nine hundred. A little better. Let's just see how that how that played out there. So if I go small now, right at some point, there we go. See that? Yeah. There we go. So it's going to only expand to like a certain degree now, which is good because scheming human beings, our eyes go left to right, and we we don't want to look all the way over there to that date. We only want to look so ah. far. There's not enough information to make this interesting. So now we have something that just kind of like Absolutely. hovers in the spot there. Yeah. Wow. We just kind of figured out gutters. That's the concept of gutters. Awesome. Yeah. We just kind of figured that in the fly, right? So <laughs> that didn't take much time at all. No, I guess so. So man, yeah, <laughs> these, these two hours have just kind of, just kind of flown by. So I'll hit the, the save <laughs> button and uh, we can MS appify that. You can even download a copy right now. Your file is ready, sir. And this will be yeah. the, the live stream responsive app. Yeah, we'll make sure that's available. Um, so thank, thank you, Matt, and thank you guys for hanging out with us. Very yeah. Much. For some reason, YouTube thinks you're going to like this video next. Let's see if they're right. Or you can select this playlist, which I've selected for you based on the content you're currently watching. Guys, got to hurry. Click one of them. Otherwise, YouTube's going to autoplay some other video.